praise the good Lord. Um, I hope everybody's been well. Uh, so we're going back to Mark of the Beast. I guess this would be part two. Uh, let's open up with prayer. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, oh Lord, Father, thou art the greatest. What a glorious God we have in you, Father. Father, we're thankful for the strength that you give us each and every day for the, uh, for the wells of water that spring up. And we thank you for the perfect example of Christ. Help us to be more like him, Father. And I bind up every evil, foul spirit that would try to come against me and my heart, and my mind, and the hearts and minds of the people. You will not interfere with this message. I bind you through, you, through the power of Yeshua's name. And I loose the Rohakadesh, the power and the anointing, and let the angels carry it forth in Yeshua's holy name. Amen. <clears throat> Okay, so we're going to start off in Revelation chapter 13, um, verse 11 through 14. <clears throat> and I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spoke as a dragon. And he exercised exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. <clears throat> so who do we know today that can call fire down on a heaven? Now we've seen examples of that in the past, right? In the Old Testament. But who do, who do we know today that can do something like this? Now our, our mentor said that one of the biggest problems that, that we've got within the these churches is that they haven't seen the power of the Holy Ghost work um, in, in so long that they're actually afraid of it. And, and people are afraid to admit that miracles are happening in the name of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> and because of this fear, there isn't many that will talk about miracles. <clears throat> Excuse me. And some of the churches sadly even explain these miracles away. But God said we, knew we need to choose to believe in him. And, and understand that when this man comes and he calls fire down on hell, heaven and says, I'm the great one, worship me. <clears throat> what are we going to say? If you've never seen anybody do that. See how this is being set up? See, we are being set up by God Almighty himself. He's permitting this. A new world order is coming. And it's being set up, a one world religion. Or they're gonna they're gonna try to put them all under one umbrella. Um 1315, Revelation 1315, just one verse here. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And you need to underline that last, that last part there. As, as many as would not worship the image of the beast would be killed. It didn't say that they might be killed. It said they will be killed. So we're not going to be having a vote on this. And I'm guessing that 90% of the church most likely isn't even talking about any of this. And, you know... I said before in the last uh, teaching there that, you know, how many difficult decisions have we had over here today in, in North America, at least? We haven't had many. See, we're being set up for this. <clears throat> and there's a lot of talk about what the image is going to look like and all that. It doesn't really matter. 
if you don't bow down to it, you're going to be killed. Let's go on. Uh, Revelation 13, 6 through 8, 16 through 18. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. And that no man might buy or sell, save he had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred threescore and six, which we know is six six six. So we can see from reading this that they're going to be setting up a global system, and that the and that the mark will be placed either in the right hand or in the forehead. And, and there's been a lot of systems that that have have been going on in the face of this earth, preparing us for this beast system. What systems? Well, how about the credit cards, which got the people to depend on these cards in order to buy things? It, it made us dependent upon it until we saw the charges for not paying it back on time. Um, but this was an excellent way for the, for the leaders to get us into debt bondage. Okay, and at the same time, it's a way of programming us for what for what's to come. And we've been conforming to this system, which is darkness. And now we're here starting to hear about cryptocurrencies. And we're starting to hear about a cashless society. And all over the face of the earth, the fiat dollars are being printed and um, into it's going into inflation. And it's soon going to be, they're going to, they're sending it right out into extinction is what's happening. And, um, you know, they're all talking about the great debt crisis that's going on all over the face of the earth. The same people that created it. They're the ones talking about how they're going to fix it. Deception. And you can see this taking shape. And our mentor prophesied that the money was going to be changed years and years ago. <clears throat> and it's coming. And I saw the other day that there's a lot of the, the different countries are developing um, cryptocurrencies right now for, for different countries. Some have unrolled it. Either way, you can just see what's happening here. They're getting us to, uh, to the final goal here. Okay. And uh, a one world currency system and a, an electronic digital currency would just be an easier way for the mark, right? You could swipe your hand or, or whatever, but that's seemingly where it's going. Um, and, and again, it's programming society to be conforming to this system. And the people are going to fall down to it. That's for sure. Revelation 14, 9 through 12. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the lamb. So this is going to be a big time thing. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever. And they have no rest day or night who worship the beast and his image and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> so uh, the first verse there says, if any man. So he's talking about mankind. So that includes everybody. If they take the mark or worship the image, image of the beast, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God. And you should underline that. So it doesn't matter who it is. If you take the mark or worship the image, you're going to burn. And that says forever. So that's, that's for eternity. All right? And, and we know what the people are going to do. We know that they're going to fall down to it. Right? 
because like I said, we're being prepped, we're being programmed. And you can see from these mandates that they're doing that they're, they're testing the people. You know, put, put some over here, put some over there, just testing the waters, seeing how people are reacting. And so we know what's gonna happen when the, when the real mark comes. The people are just gonna conform to it, just like they're doing now. <clears throat> the people that are of this world, they're, they're gonna take the mark when it comes and they're the ones that are gonna be pressuring us to take it. Okay, and we're gonna go to Revelation 16, one and two. And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, go your ways and pour out the vials of the wrath of God upon the earth. And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth and there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast and upon them which worshiped his image. So we can see that this is all gonna start to happen long before we stand before God. And this is why I said that before that, no other generation has stood where we're standing today. And they've never, no other generation has had, had to deal with this mark of the beast. So we need to be proclaiming salvation, receiving Christ into your heart. That's, what, that's what's required for salvation, for our spirit to be able to be received into heaven. But even if you, even if you have received the Christ, if you take the mark when it comes, you don't go to heaven. Serious, right? And that's why we're saying to the church, wake up church, prepare yourselves for what's coming. A church that isn't prepared for this is gonna fall into it. And they won't even have a clue what's coming. But because of the mercy of our Lord God, he says that surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret under the mouth of his prophets first. And that's why they're not gonna be able to stand before the living God and say, La, Lord God, I didn't know. I didn't know, because you're hearing it today. And this message came from a prophet of God. But the church says that's condemnation and that's too hard a word. You better wake up and understand what's going on here. Because Christianity has become soft. And, 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 it's be, and a lot of them have become stagnant. They're neither cold nor hot. But this doesn't mean that the Lord our God isn't moving upon the earth. See, a lot of us get to thinking it's about us forgetting that it's about this living God. It's about his kingdom come and his will be done. And that's the picture that we need to hold on to in this hour. It's about what he's doing that matters because everything else is a lie. But Christianity has become soft. Yeah, but Paul said we don't need to keep the law anymore. Well, how about, the, how about Jesus Christ? What did he tell us? Uh, he said, he said, he, uh, if you love me, keep my commandments. And what commandments were those? He was reciting his father's commandments. That's the commandments. You know, the 10 commandments, the ones we took from the Old Testament, the whole law, the Torah. But unfortunately, we only hear what we choose to hear. And we're all responsible for those decisions. You know, Jesus tried to warn us. He said, they're gonna, those wolves are going to come in sheep's clothing, <clears throat> right? But nowadays, it's been, more about, it's, it's been more about the church buildings. It's been more about the, uh, you know, the basketball court or let's get a state-of-the-art uh, kitchen rather than further in God's will. That's an abomination in the eyes of God. And just like they, they, they're more concerned with building up their church building, so they've been building up themselves in their own lives. It's like they, that same model, uh, you know, they're, they're living it, unfortunately. But what church did Jesus Christ build? What church did the apostles build? Yeah, they might have been building a church, but it wasn't with physical tools. It was with the Holy Ghost and it was with the word of God. And it, it, it's a church with lively stones. Okay, it, it's about the body of Christ. That's what this is about. 
and we're going to Revelation 15, chapter, uh, yeah, chapter 15, 1 and 2. And I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them is filled up the wrath of God. And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that had gotten victory over the beast, and over his image, and over his mark, and over the number of his name, standing on the sea of glass, having the harps of God. So not everyone's going to take the mark. Not everybody's going to take the mark. Some, of, some are going to resist the evil that's coming. See, I like what Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said to King Nebuchadnezzar there. They said, King, it'd be better for us to die in that furnace than for us to have to deal with this living God of ours. See, that's the attitude that we need to develop with what's coming. And to develop something, it takes time. That's why we need to start preparing our hearts for this. But nowadays, we've got Christians out here being afraid to say that they're Christians. Well, they're the ones that are going to take the mark. Hundreds of thousands of professing Christians are going to be taking the mark of the beast because they don't know him. See, we need to know him not just by word, but by his spirit. They obviously know him by word or they never would have received Jesus Christ, but, but they, they don't know him by his spirit. And we're going to go to Revelation 19, verse 20. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into the lake of fire, burning with brimstone. So, once again, that just gives you another consequence of what happens for taking it. And we're going to go to Revelation 20. Verse four, and I saw, I saw thrones and they that sat upon them and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God and which had not worshiped the beast, neither his image, neither had received the mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Amen. So, like I said, there's going to be some that aren't going to take the mark. And we just heard the reward right there. Now, this doesn't give us a pretty picture of the church. Right? And where is that triumphant church in here that the pastors are teaching about in these churches? Where is it? I don't see it in this book. We're not going to, it doesn't say we're going to fly away, sweet Jesus. See, God didn't bring us this far along into his word just to take us out of it before we, we get finished completing what he wants us to do. Listen, there's going to be so many miracles brought at this time that people are going to be afraid. If you've seen the dead raised, then you haven't seen nothing yet. <clears throat> Why can't the church be brought out, of, out at this time? Because Jesus said, all that I will do, you will do, and even greater things. See, these are the times when <clears throat> those greater works are going to be brought. And it'll be done by, by those that have this revelation knowledge, not just us here in Ephraim, okay, but everybody on the face of this earth that's believing in this living God and trusting in him with all their heart. Because it could be any one of us. Because we are, we are all that God has right now. See, you don't need to be a big-time preacher. We're all big time preachers to God. He loves us all. It's just we have to believe in this living God with all our heart. And a church is going to step forward in this time, showing the power and the glory of, of our living God, okay? In this time. Coming up. And we all need to understand, again, it, it doesn't matter if you're a Christian and you're saved with the Holy Ghost. Okay, if you take the mark, then you're going to burn. And that's all there is to it. Please understand this and mark this in your hearts and in your spirit. This has to be told to your children. This isn't a game. 
It's written in the book for a reason. It's coming. And John the Revelator prophesied about it how many years ago? And now we're seeing it come to pass. <clears throat> how did he get all of this right? Because it's by the Spirit of God. That's how. And um, this is where our mentor read a story about something that was relevant in, in, in the time. So I'm just going to say something. Uh, you know, this is just the John 101, just to make us think. Um, but they're supposed to be coming out with that computer chip that goes into people's heads this year. Okay. And now could this be a way of the, uh, of them enticing people to take the mark, you know, promising us that, I don't know, maybe you could extend your life by 20 years or 50, not like they tell you the truth anyways. Uh, and, and by your thoughts alone, that you'd be connected to the internet and all that knowledge would be yours. Where else have we heard something like that before? In the Garden of Eden, right? Just take a bite of that tree, uh, that fruit over there, and you'll be just like God. And here's that paralyzation of the word that we talked about before in this message. And, and do we think for a second that the people of today are not going to do this? You know, we don't have any morals today. We took God out of our society a long, a long, long time ago. And Jesus said there would be lawlessness abounding. Paul said that people would be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection. Need I go further? Yep, that's where we're at. It's the end times, all right. Do you think that these people walking around with three different colors of hair? Because the hair God gave me ain't good enough? You think they're going to say no? How about the people out in the streets burning down innocent people's businesses? And, that the, and the same people, the media and the politicians are sticking up for. You think they're going to have a problem taking this? Or how about the people fighting for abortion out there? Or the ones walking around the rainbow flags? Listen, these people already know they're going to hell. They'll be the first in line. And they'll be pressuring you and I to take it as well. So this time is coming, and what can we do about it? Well, we got to try and try to try to warn the people to prepare themselves to know what's coming, because God's people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge, and that's why we better not be done learning. But what they're they're teaching? What are they teaching the people within these churches? Don't be concerned about any of this. And then when the, the real mark comes, they're going to say, that's not the real mark, brother. And then they're going to laugh you to scorn. Because the church is asleep. Because they've fallen for false doctrines. And they didn't take Jesus serious when he said, beware, they're going to come to you in sheep's clothing. It sounds like the church is ripe for all this to take place. See, God's tried to warn us through the years. And he, he was trying to teach us. He was bringing revelation knowledge under the churches through the years, through the denominations, trying to teach them. He wasn't trying to divide them. He was trying to, to show them new revelation knowledge. And what happened every time a little bit of new, uh, you know, a new piece of revelation knowledge came to a denomination, what did they say? I got it. Yep, we've got it right. Our religion's right and everybody else's is wrong. And that's how it went. It went from the Catholics to the Lutherans to the Protestants, maybe not in that order. But that's how it's went. See, they knew, they knew them by word, but they didn't know them by the spirit. But we each decide when we open our eyes. Okay, it, it, it's our choice, right? So basically, if you got your faith in a church, you're lost. If you got a, if you got your faith in a preacher, then you're lost. And I'm talking about me. We need to get our eyes fixed upon the Holy Son, Jesus Christ, and then the living God will 
will come to you. He'll quicken your spirit and he'll quicken your heart so that you can have eyes to see and ears to hear what's happening right now on the face of this earth because Jesus Christ never let down any man. So we're all accountable for this information. And, but God, once again, he's doing something new. He's drawing out a remnant. He's teaching us old things and new things so that we can get this done for him. And that's what we're going to do. The truth is God's given us everything we need to be triumphant. But what, what, what did the church forget us, uh, forget to teach us? We need to have a relationship with him personally. We need to have a relationship with our father in heaven. And since the, the appointed time isn't quite here yet, then let's draw near. Forget about our kingdoms and let's get into his kingdom. All right. And no one's exempt from this. I'm, I'm preaching to myself here as well. We all got to draw near. Uh, Job 10, 14, just one quick verse here. If I sin, then thou markest me, and thou wilt not acquit me from mine iniquity. So this is like we talked about, I think, in the last session there, that the Lord God has his own marking system, different from the adversary. And, and that is that he seals you spiritually when you believe in Jesus Christ. He seals you with the Holy Ghost. And being sealed with Christ gives us opportunities that the rest of the world doesn't have. See, the rest of the world doesn't have, they don't have a decision to make about the mark of the beast. Because they're just going to take it. And we already talked about the unfortunate thing that the, that the church is going to take it. Most of the church. But the fact of it is that we've been given an opportunity here. We've been uh, an opportunity to stand in the very presence of this world with the revelation knowledge that we've received here in Ephraim. Uh, you know, uh, if what an awesome opportunity this is. It's going to be unbelievable, all the things that we're going to be seeing coming up here, all the things that we're going to be witnessing, amazing sights. There won't be enough books that they can write about all the things we're going to see. And those that are going to stand and endure are going to be used for these miracles. See, your neighbors are going to talk. Government officials, officials are going to talk. And some of us are going to be labeled. Some of us are going to be put into categories. And they're going to say, oh, no, what does that man bring into my town? Or woman. And the living God's hand is going to be upon us. And I can hardly wait. We just need to get in, in line with this living God. And we will get this done because we are overcomers. Don't let the wolf separate you from God's sheep. And we are God's sheep. You're not alone, brothers and sisters. God needs, God needs each and every one of us. Amen. All right, we're going to end there. Let's close with prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord God, it's all about you, Father, and your kingdom come. Father, we're so thankful to do our parts. Father, help our hearts, help our spirits rise up, Father, to meet you on the path. Give us strength. And we thank you, Lord God, for allowing us to see your will. And what a glorious will it is. In Yeshua the Christ's name, I pray. Amen. Hey, Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Till next time. Amen.